Hi, and welcome to the journey of life and beyond, at the end of life journey and beyond, uh, the sands of time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. And Happy New Year to you, Susan. Nice to see you. Happy New Year, Lisa, as well. My name is Susan Cooperso. I'm an end of life doula and legacy specialist. And today we're going to be talking about goals for the new year, as everybody's talking about goals and, and how to implement them and and ways to start goals and how to finish goals. And goals, I think, are especially tough, Lisa, when you're going through yes. an end of life process. Whether you've gone through it already, you're going through it now, any type of goals, um, they don't really seem important because you want to be present and in the moment. But sometimes I think, especially after having lost a person in your life, even the little goals are important, right? Absolutely. And I think that people make the mistake of looking at the big picture, okay? You don't need to look that way. You need to say to yourself, what are the small things that I can do? And those are like small steps. And each step leads you to where you want to be next. So you don't, don't get overwhelmed by thinking, oh, well, I should be doing this, or why didn't I do this? Or, you know, by now I should be here. It's not going to be that at all. First of all, for each person, it's very different. And secondly, you have to think in terms of what works for you and what you feel good about. Okay. The success is always so important. You don't want to beat yourself up. Oh, I didn't do that yet. Or why didn't I do that? Or when should I do that? You know, you need to look in terms of the every day, sometimes every hour and start from there. So again, during these circumstances where you have a, a sort of a, a lifetime sentence and you don't know the time frame. Um, you can set still small goals of what you think are really important. And then for those of us who have lost somebody, we can set small goals for what we want to do with our lives. And again, we look at 2022 at just as sort of a rebirth, a new time for us. You so. know, Lisa, I, my husband, when he was here, right, he had a problem with the word goals. He believed you live now in the moment and I don't have to make any goals. And I always fought him on this because in order to be successful or to get what you want to achieve and attain in life, you have to have some kind of goal in your mind or on paper or something. But that was him. And then as my boys started getting older, I don't know, I, I didn't really instill that they had to have goals and to go after you. Or maybe I just worded it differently and I did because the week of New Year's, my younger son, who uh, never really has goals for himself, I'll, I'll put it that way, um, he came up to me and he, and he must have read something or heard something that struck a chord because he says to me, I've made some goals for the year. He goes, not a, um, a resolution, but I've made some goals. Would you like to hear what they are? He said, first of all, I made a, a, a year goal a year long goal that by the end of the year, I'll, I'll have this am amount of money saved in my savings account. So I thought that was big. And that was enough for me with him. That that's a big goal. Right. And then he continued the conversation and he said, and I have um, a month long goal, you know, by the end of the month, I'll have done this and that. And I, I thought, see. wow, he's even yes. getting more detailed. He had to read this somewhere, right? And then on top of that, he said, and I set weekly goals as well. Nice. And they were shorter goals, like go to the gym twice each week, nice. um, do other things like that. And I was pretty impressed, you know, and honestly, never really heard it laid out that way. I would lay out my goals for the year. Um, yeah. But what do you think about that? That's Having wonderful. smaller I, chunks. Correct. I want to break this down for people. Let's break this down for people who do not know what the future is going to be as far as their health. And they're looking at their lives and saying, what am I going to do? What's, you know, everything, what's going to happen to me? Break down, as you stated, into small goals that you really want to achieve. Maybe they didn't see a relative in a really long time. Maybe it's a friend 
that they really do want to get together with. And they and now decide that within the next month, I will see this person or I will call this person and do a visit or even a Zoom visit with this person. But and it's something, something about that, they- that, Lisa, something about that, like what you just said, you know, you've disconnected from somebody, but giving yourself a month, there's something about that, that you program your mind and you can prepare for it. Right. It's not like right. somebody's telling you, well, if you haven't talked to them, call them tomorrow. Just pick up right. the phone and call them. Right. Sometimes right. we need to mentally prepare ourselves yes. to do something. And when yes. you have a few weeks to say, oh, I'm going to do it by this day. I'm going to do it. That's it's right. easier for you to do. And accomplish. That's right. I think that part of it is writing down what's important to people. I think that with everything that goes on, you lose sort of the things that are important and what will um, you know, be special to somebody. And maybe that's, I always wanted to go to whatever it is. Um, and then trying to figure out, okay, well, how is that possible? Um, of course, right now with all the things that are going on, maybe it's just a virtual trip there, you know? Um, or maybe it's somebody else helping you with pictures of it or something. But the, just, I think, detaching yourself and trying to figure out, well, what is important to me? What makes me happy and the small things? You know, even something that you really wanted to eat and you hadn't eaten in a long time. You know, I really miss this. And this is something that I love to do. I love to eat this or I love to do this particular activity. You know, maybe it's even making something. Especially talking to the person right now who's already suffered the loss, right? And, And maybe that overwhelm has not gone away and it's not going away. So the idea of, even the word goal, you could care less. You could care less because why is why are these things happening in life? You know, and, and before you get to the point where you realize life is too short and I need to implement some of these things, there's an overwhelming period where just hearing the word goal right now may mean to you nothing. You know, I don't, I don't want to have a goal. I don't, I don't care. I just don't care. And that happens a lot sure. with loss and that's sure. okay sure. because you're supposed to go through that period. Sure. But to help you break out a little bit, I yeah. tell people, even the goal of getting dressed one day, you know, is, is something right. big for some people, or it maybe is. it's just being able to go out for a walk. That's big for some people. Or right. even going and visiting somebody, that's big. You know, so those small things that you that you don't seem to think are important, they are. Because your life has been uprooted. Things are very different now. Um, and now you have to sort of rebuild it and recreate. That's and it all was- depends on where you are on that timeline. Yes. yes. You know, I mean, you can be a caretaker right now at home with with the patient in your life. And when you hear the word goal, oh, the hair stands on the back of your neck because what do you mean goal? This is what I do every day. You know, there is no, I have nothing big to look forward to in the future. What, you know, goal is just too big of a word sometimes. So like you're saying, let's start with maybe a weekly goal. I, right? I'm i gonna go smaller than that. I'm gonna go okay. smaller than that. I'm going to talk about just the day. And if you're a caregiver, by the way, if you can't take care of yourself, we know that you can't help somebody else. So you have to rejuvenate yourself. And that might be a bath with a bath bomb in it. Okay. A bubble thing. Lots of candles. And lots of candles. or or And music. Yeah. And music. Something that, you know, you know, rejuvenates yourself. And that's yeah. just a small goal for just that day. This is what I'm going to do for myself. And that's fine. That's how you need to break up what you're doing. Let's say the anniversary of something's coming up. My husband's anniversary of his death is coming up. I My goal might be to prepare that day in a certain way. And I think about what it is I want to do on that day and how I want it to look, how I want to feel that day and that's a goal that's a goal of mine I mean I know that I watch Ghost that's my movie and I know that I drink a little wine um you know and so those things just are 
what I do. But for others who don't have some things in place, you need to figure out what nourishes you. And same thing, and for people who are at an end of life, they need to think about what nourishes them. And that's very yeah. difficult, but it- I like the idea. I like the idea, Lisa, of, um, you know, yes, the, the daily, you know, daily goal. Okay. But sometimes that might be just too overwhelming too. But I, I like, um, I like the monthly goal. Okay. And I think that's something that you can sit down in front of the TV at night and just come up with four things, four things that you, that you haven't done in a while that might make you feel good. Um, whether it be the walk, whether it be a bath, whether it be if you if if you love to shop and you haven't done been able to do that in so long, I know times are hard right now, but places are open, malls are open, and you can wear your mask and and do it safely. But maybe put four things down on that piece of paper, things that you always love to do, and then say, okay, so for the first week coming in February now. In the first week, I will, I'll take that bath. That's going to be my goal. So you're going to prepare over the next two weeks to have, get those candles ready, find that spa music station, you know, make a night for yourself. Uh, and then right. and the exactly. second week, say I'm going for the walk. Here's the week. thing. It has yeah. to be something that's definable. So it's on Wednesday night. I've decided yeah. that I'm going to spend an hour taking a bath. You know, you have to define it because it on if the you calendar. say, okay, I'm going to take a bath eventually. It and doesn't don't happen. Do it doesn't happen. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And then you don't do it. I I never used um, an online calendar before uh, until, well, now I have been for a good three years or so. And I, now I can't live without it because I even put personal appointments on it and a doctor that I have next month or the month after and every single day, even if I don't go on my computer, I'll open my phone and I'll look at that calendar. So I know, oh, did I forget to do anything? Like, you know, yeah, I think calendar. writing down does help and accountability helps a little too. Saying to somebody, this is what I really want to do. This is what I intend to do. That is accountability too. But right. when you back up all this, it's got to be something personal that only you feel is valuable to you it's not defined by other people who say well why aren't you doing this by now <laughs> or right. why don't you you know and all that puts pressure on you and you don't realize that it's not then now it's uncomfortable now it's a burden and now you feel well you know people are telling me what to do and I don't want to do that so it has right. to come from your own self it has right. to be something and that you, resonates. You know what's even important though? And I think this is an important part of that process to um, have a page in a journal that you're doing this each month. If you, if you choose to go with the four goals for the month, right? One a week. But after you do complete the bubble bath that Wednesday night, right? Check it off or put a line through it yeah. because you're going to see you know, the continuation of the things that you have accomplished. Right, right. So say at the end of six months, by July, you come up with your four things again, right? That you want to accomplish that month. When you see all these things crossed out or all these check marks, however you want to do it, you're seeing, wow, yeah. you know, I have accomplished. I am moving one step further. I can implement things that I'm putting my mind to yes. and do it. And maybe those little steps are going to get a little bigger now. Yes. Yes. You can add. Along the way. Yes. It's like adding to your success. They're also yeah. successes and they help your confidence um, and they also move you forward. And the time frame is absolutely your own. Just ignore anybody who tells you what you should be doing at a certain point or whatever, because it's not how it works. Um, right. You know, whether it's the end of a life or past a life. Um, this is a very personal thing and all of us behave differently about this. But the idea of goal setting is so important because that's how we move. That's how we live. That's, that's how right. we accomplish things in our lives. Baby steps. Baby, Baby steps. steps. Baby steps. You know, another thing I, I feel is can be 
a really good thing. And, and though this isn't for everybody, but to have maybe an accountability partner. So if you have a very good friend, yeah. say, hey, this is something I need to do. And, you know, you're in a different place than me, but why don't you try it too? So I have somebody accountable to, you know, make sure that you see my list and I see your list. And you could say to me next week, oh, did you take that bubble bath yet? Okay. And idea. I think that having an accountability partner, you know, could yeah. be really useful. Now, not for everybody, everybody doesn't have a best friend or somebody that they would want to follow each other's goals. So that's not for everybody. But I think for the person that does have that very close friend or sister or somebody, this could be beneficial for them. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's a great idea because yeah. it's enough for your own self to figure it out, but to help have somebody support you in this. Just like when, when women or men, but women, I say, uh, go on diets, right? Yeah. They go on diets. Isn't it so much more pleasant when you have a friend that's doing the same thing as you, yes. you know, I went through that recently in the last um, two years or so with somebody and it was so great because we connected on the phone every single day and said, hey, did you do this? Did you do that? What'd you have for breakfast? Did you take your walk today? And it was nice to, to bounce that off with somebody and to feel connected. Yes. Um, so in a situation like this, I mean, even people that aren't going through any, any kind of end of life experience, they should really set some, some goals for themselves too. Absolutely. So their Absolutely. list will be different than yours. Yours might be a little slower in coming and, and theirs might be something to do with their businesses or their families or, yeah. but you switch copies and you know what each other's goals are and hold each other a little bit accountable. That's a great idea. Right? And I like the idea of a journal too, by the way. I think mm -hmm. journaling is really helpful. It helps people sort of see where they are. Um, and uh, it helps them just get in touch with themselves, you know, of what they, you know, and again, again, the word goal, don't yeah. get nervous, yep. Yep. you know, yep. don't, it's really what we're saying is, is what is it that can make you happy right now? That's right. That's right. And, and plan for it. And nothing. here's the thing. If you don't plan, it never happens. That's People right. say, oh, you I think wish about I it in your mind and then it goes right out. <laughs> that's right. Cloud, that's right? right. That's right. That's right. So the planning part is putting things into something that's more concrete. As you said, and that this could take a half a day to do that. That could take right. a whole day to put that into place, but set aside time for yourself to do that and get it done. That's right. And then you'll have your blueprint. You'll have the foundation on how to move forward yeah. one step at a time. Yes. Yes. And again, the reward for yourself to feel proud of yourself and to feel like oh I did this now I can do that um just it's a great feeling and especially at the beginning of the year when everybody's making all these goals and stuff and that's they're not even involved with what we what we are you know what we're talking yeah. about here we're talking about critical life circumstances and situations that are very draining and very challenging for people so yeah. first of all I have to give ourselves credit <laughs> be really good to ourselves, really. That's something that people aren't used to, you know? Um, so and nurturing ourselves. Step, out the box. Hmm? step outside of the box That's a little right. bit. That's it right. It might scare you, but maybe, maybe one out of the four goals for the month, make it something where it's a little more challenging. Hmm. You know, like, no, I, I wouldn't want to do that. Maybe, maybe a place that you used to frequently visit with that person or, oh my gosh, I could never do that. You know, you know, what's interesting it's a little about, challenging. Yeah. You know, what's interesting about that for me, it turns out that the um, planning of the thing or the thinking of it is worse than the, it is itself. You know, really, it's the anticipation and the to me, holiday. it seems like the, that would be the opposite. No. For me, it's how am I going to cope? What's going to happen? How am I going to feel? And then the day comes and I do whatever it's going to be. And it seems okay. Wasn't that bad after all? No. Wasn't that bad after all? I remember that's those a, first. That's a good tip right there because yeah. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah. Those first birthdays or those first holidays or the yeah, all the firsts. It was the anticipation of what that was going to be like. 
I felt strangled trying to think about what that what that's going to be like. And then it would come and I got through it, you know, with a plan. <laughs> I got through it. So it was OK. It's really what a goal sheet is. It's a plan of action. Exactly. Exactly. Right. It's a plan of action, no matter how big, no matter how small. Uh, you know, maybe you've lost somebody a few years ago and maybe your goal for this year is to go on a first date. Yeah, that's, that's right. hard. That that's is hard. Really, so, really hard. So that process, okay, is going to be different from different people. You know, I know that for me, I join one of these activity groups because I just want to be with people who are single like me. And that would be very different from all our friends who were all couples. So that was a big deal. And I did that the following year. Um, I was seeing friends again, but the following year I joined a group, a just a activity group, you know? So again, different goals. step along your process. That's correct. You know, correct. in your journal, that could be one of the steps. Correct. Correct. And they, and it is difficult thinking about it and all, but again, the small steps, you know, for some people, it's just going out, just going out the door, you know, or just going to something alone. That's a big deal. Yeah. You know? I went to a movie yeah. alone. I remember feeling really strange because it's the first time I've gone to a movie alone and I enjoyed the movie very much. And I was fine. I thought I wouldn't be fine, but I was, I was fine. You know, right. so, you know, or, you know, again, it's trying something to nice to challenge yourself. I mean, have you ever, have you ever gone out to eat alone? I did. Okay. So you have, I, I don't think I ever have. I and that seems a little weird to me. No, no, because you're used to eating with somebody, um, having conversation, I, uh, right? So I just opened up my phone and I was, I mean, at first I was observing everybody because I love watching people and stuff. And then I said, okay, well, so I'll open up my phone and I started, mm -hmm. you know, doing some things on my phone, but I detached and then I enjoyed the food and enjoyed just looking at the surroundings and stuff. And it was fine. I thought, oh gosh, I'm going to be so lonely and it's going to be so difficult. And it really wasn't. It was okay. Mm. It felt strange. And that's the thing. You have to take in the feelings, even if they're uncomfortable, because they're not going to be the same. Nothing's going to be the same. So you have to embrace that. Yeah. And say, it's okay. So again, I all it, it involves stepping outside of your comfort zone a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, and, and to look back, look back at all the core at the X's and the checks. Yeah. Because you really, honestly, I think that that is going to help tremendously to look back and say, wow, I sat Monday and said, I need to do all these things. And now here it is July and August and look at everything I, I set out to do. Yes. And I've done. Yes. Yes. But again, I just caution people because sometimes they set goals that are not attainable and we want success. Whatever we do, we want success to feel that we were able to do something and then go beyond the next. So I say to people, don't be intimidated by what others do or what other time frames are or anything like that. Your goals might be so small, but that's OK because they're for you. They are what, what will help you move forward. And, and the same thing with end of life. You know, nobody knows. They can say numbers, they can say months, whatever else. But so detach and think, okay, what are the goals and things that are important to me? And what do I want for myself or for my family? Or, you know, and like, it's maybe, you know, for me, I want to make sure that my husband had written this Remembering Your Father book. And I knew he couldn't write it. So my goal was to make sure that I helped him. You know, I would ask him questions. I would write things down for him. And that I would have one book for my, my daughter and one book for my son. And we did that. Yeah, that's a week. Wonderful. It took a week. It was very fluid, very open, you know. And you are a legacy person. You've got great legacy books. So, you know, maybe that's somebody's legacy goal, you know, to yeah. do that. When you have time, in my case... You know, my husband went from one day to the next where he was intubated. So we never had the time to accomplish anything like that. So I feel a little lost where that could. Maybe that's why I help other people do it and get it done. 
Sure. But what would you say, Lisa, if, um, okay, so if we don't want to call it a goal, we call it things okay. that what, what makes you happy, just the little things okay. that make you happy. And what if somebody were to say to you, but I, I, nothing I makes me happy. Nothing that makes, nothing me, makes happy. me happy. And I, get, I have and no I get joy. That. And you know what? Nothing. You know what? What? That's okay. That's okay. So what we say is it's okay to understand that right now, happiness is something that's very difficult to attain. So let's just find things that you can that you can work towards that might be just small sets of things, activities and things to do. And you might have to rediscover what happiness means to you. You might have to How do you do that? How does by, somebody do that? By looking at your life and saying, what did I enjoy? What do I what do I do? every day what what did I like you know and you have to recapture sort of some of those and then new okay maybe I'll try this line dancing I don't know if I'm going to like it but maybe I'll try the line dancing you know and I and again right now it's hard to be out but maybe there are some things in maybe I will try to watch some old movies do I enjoy old movies you know maybe that's something that I could try and again, happiness has to be redefined since there's so much sadness. Uh, many years ago, uh, and this was before my husband passed, but I sat with a legal pad and I must have filled out about 60, 70 things that brought joy and happiness into my life. Wow. And a lot of them I remember, and I can't find it. I have an idea of where mm. it is and I have to really go dig and look, but I think I, I can find where it is. Um, it should always be somewhat near you, though. It shouldn't get buried like mine did. But there were even little things on there, like, and it took me, it took me as long as I thought to put that together. I remember I did it in a night watching a movie or two, you know, on TV. And But I remember the little things that were on there, because I was digging deep down inside, and I would find things like um, clean sheets on your bed. Mm -hmm. The first night that you put the clean sheets on your bed and maybe spraying a little lavender around. I used to get that from Bath and Body Works. I haven't got that uh, forever, but that clean sheets, um, uh, gardenias, you know, just that smell or gardenias or the other one was, um, what, what's the purple, the long purple one, the Mm. Oh, or like that orchid. grows outside on the bushes and the trees, the purple. Oh, yeah. That's hyacinths. Is that what they are? Hyacinths? They, they smell really no. sweet. They smell sweet. Yes. Yeah. And it's just a, not at the top of my brain right now. But I had, like, I'd have a plant or I'd had some in the house. And every time I walked past that vase, it, like, nice. gives you such a good feeling. Scents are tremendous, right? Nice. So that list, it wasn't all big things that made right. me happy or brought me joy. It was a lot of little things. And sometimes, you know, especially since he's passed, I wish I had that list because you forget sure. what the little joys are in your life. Sure. And maybe it's hard to put that kind of list together right now, but work at it a little bit because you can always reference that and say, hey, you know, taking a weekend adventure was one of my big ones. I love to just go in the car and go to places that I've never been before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I do that a lot with my sister-in-law and my, my niece. My niece is 21 now, but, and it's fun that she's older and not yeah. so young anymore. And we have such a good time. We will say, okay, let's hit the North Shore today. Or let's head out East today. And we always have fun and laugh and listen to music. And that's something that brings me joy, any kind of new adventure. Nice. So it's finding those things that you remember doing before or that you think somewhere in your head, yeah, that brought me a little bit of happiness and joy and put them on a list. That's a great idea. And there's something else. I think you have to be open to people saying to, you know, I'd love to take you to, or can we meet? And that might be so overwhelming to people, but I think you need to get to the point where you say, yeah, I'm going to try that. Yeah. You know, okay. But I'm, you know, take me out or, or, you That's know, it's right. like my kids. When you're feeling like this, 
you don't want to do anything. That's You'd right. rather just curl up in your jammy pants with your favorite right. old sweatshirt on and just veg, That's right. veg out in front of the TV. We know that firsthand. That's right. So forcing yourself to do certain things is important. 10 important days. Important your goals. Exactly. 10 days after my birth, after my husband died was my birthday. And I really didn't know what to do. And my daughter said, let's do a couple's spa day. And at first I thought, oh, there's no way that I'm going to put myself in that position to do anything at all. And it turned out I had an entire day of self-love, you know, my hair, my nails, my facial, my body things. It was a wonderful day. And I didn't think it was possible to have a good day and have my first birthday without my husband. And I did. I was surprising. And it was... Um, amazing so i think those, those are important goals to have though. <laughs> and and on your goal list you should really include those because self-care is huge and we don't yeah. all do it and sometimes it has to be done on purpose but oh my gosh you'll be so thankful for the massage for the facial for the foot massage at these foot relaxation places they have now you know, any kind of touch, I've mentioned it in a lot of videos, touch was really, really important for me. It was comforting yeah. and warm. And But what I want to point out is that you need to be receptive to friends who do care and who do want to help you. And it's very, it's so easy to say, hey, you know, I'm busy with paperwork. I'm busy with so much, whatever it is that you think you're doing. But the friends who are there and reaching out to you really do want to support you. And giving them just a little bit of encouragement and saying, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll try that dinner or, or yeah, I'll, I'll come over the house just for a little while, but make sure you put your own limits, a little while. Um, and then you might be surprised that you get there and you're playing a game or whatever else and you allow yourself just a little while of some fun time. And that's happened to me. I didn't want to go to a particular <laughs> place or an event and then after, when I got there and as the night went on, I thought, wow, I'm so glad I didn't back out because this is a really nice time, yeah. you know, and you don't realize it until afterwards. But OK, so on the flip side of what you just said about having the friends and the close people in your life, you know, relationships change. We have they videos do. that we've done on that as well. They do. And when relationships change and friendships change, there may not be the same group of friends yes. that you always yes. had yes, and don't care or whatever. And so maybe that could be one of your goals too, to start praying for maybe some more friends to come into your life, some new friends, some new relationships. And I got to tell you, it'll work and it fills a gap. And it, and I went through this a little bit, you know, with different relationships. And I know and I asked for the universe to please bring me in some some new friends in my life. And the and God, the universe did do that. And I have a wonderful group of friends now. And it's it's a beautiful thing, but you have to know that, uh, be aware of it, be conscious of that things have changed. And how do you want to make that change? How can you meditate or you know, visualize how things will be a little bit different for you and then take little steps like this goal setting, right? To and like I told you, you to find an activity group of people who yeah. are single people. That's a big deal. You know, yeah. you haven't been single for years or whatever the situation is. And now you're reaching out in a different way. And this is going to feel uncomfortable. And it's going to be different and all. I found a friend at this, at this thing. I went to a white water rafting thing all by myself. It's like so talk about- this was a year after. And I said, I don't know anybody, but I'm going to do this thing anyway, because it seems like it would be fun. And I met a friend there that I have friend, had friends since. And she's found somebody after, and I have. And um, we remember that. We remember the dude ranch we went to. We weren't dating anybody. We were just were friends enjoying the time. And it was great. And again, it's an activity group of single people. You know, with setting these new goals and trying new things and challenges in your life, one of the words that jump out of, at me is fear. It's yeah. fear of the unknown, 
of not knowing what's going to happen, that you're going to have a terrible time. And I want to give you one example that I don't think I ever brought up before, but it, it just popped into my brain now. So, and this was before I was even married. I was in my early 20s and I had planned a big vacation. I guess it was for about two weeks. And I planned it with a girlfriend and we were going to fly over to London and visit London right. and the surrounding outskirts. I was so interested. So I did research. I planned things. I'm so excited to do this. And two days before the trip, she pulled out wow. and she couldn't do it. Money was a problem. This was a problem. That was a problem. And she just basically just canceled on me. Wow. And I had a big choice to make and talk about being fearful mm. of the unknown and what's to come. And I can't do this by myself. You know, talk about a challenge. Oh, yeah. And I chose to go. Wow. I chose to go by yourself. By myself <laughs> at 20, 22 years old or whatever I was. So the first thing that happened, and this is, I believe, what the universe brings you, the first thing that happened, and I was on Air India. I, I don't know why I got that flight. A friend helped me book a flight. I was on Air India, and I was really, I was afraid. I was scared of trying something new. We were halfway through the flight, and the pilot comes out, and he walks halfway down the aisle, and I don't know if the flight attendant maybe said something about me or something, but he had a bottle of wine in his hand and he sat next to me and he says to me, congratulations for flying across country by yourself. And I want you to take time to celebrate you. And this is for you wow. from Air India. And that was wow. the first thing that happened on that plane. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be okay. Wow. So the first night I went to London, though, I booked the most expensive hotel because I, you know, like you'd pay almost a thousand dollars here in New York City for that, that kind of hotel because I was afraid. You know, I didn't want to stay in a smaller place. I wanted to feel safe. So sure. I did. And that was okay. And then somebody told me about bread, bed and breakfast row that they have there. So the far, first day I was there after my jet lag, I walked up and down and I looked for the perfect little place that said it had room available. And it was the sweetest old couple and it was their home. And we don't shut the light off and lock the door until the last person comes in at night. And we know when you're coming in, I felt safe. Anyway, I did all the sightseeing things and, and lo and behold, now it's at least 30 years later, I won't tell my age. It's one of the, the best things I ever did. Yeah. It's such a great memory that I took a chance yes. and I stepped outside of the box yes. when those feelings were so uncomfortable for me. Yes. I was really scared. Yes. Right. So I'm relating that to this time now with loss and mm -hmm. how overwhelming it can be. And mm -hmm. even the little things are scary. Yes. They're scary. Yeah. So I'm, story. I've got I remember a, after accomplishing what you set yeah. out to do, you're going to look back and say, whoa, look at me. I'm, you go. I've got, <laughs> I've got, a, I've got one of those too. I'm in Detroit. Now this is um, the year that my husband died and I'm in Detroit and the last training of my program um, and it's quarterfinal. So it's March and it's quarterfinals of basketball. So Detroit is really full of people and, you know, full of bustle. And where I am at the Ford Motor Company over there um, is a little bit of ways, but I'm a Motown fan, okay? And Hitsville is in Detroit. So my goal was to figure out how I was gonna get to Hitsville all by myself. And I made calls all over the place. These, you know, the taxi cab said, there's no way, you're never gonna find anybody to take you, all right. I finally, you know, it's, it's the day that I'm going back home. And I said, I got to do this. I got to get there. And I found a taxi cab company who was willing for $200 to take me to Hitsville to wait for me there while I was in the museum, two hours in the museum, and then to take me to the airport. And apparently that was a really great deal um, for somebody to do that for the $200. And he did. Sure. And I went into Hitsville and um, 
I mean, I saw Studio A where everybody had rehearsed the whole, everything. I saw everything in that place. And when I came out of Hitsville, I sat down on the stoop and I cried. And I said, I did this all by myself. Yeah. <laughs> my husband's been gone only a couple months and I allowed myself to take a risk and to do this. And it is one of the best memories I have that I did that. It's Isn't big, that amazing? Big. I just big. got the chills because that's the whole point of, of this video. Yeah. This is the whole point in what we're talking about. The big things, the little things rather little can things. seem really big and right. the big things, tremendous and profound. And yeah. that's something that will stay with you forever. It's such a big accomplishment that you did. Yes. Yes. And these are the things that we have to kind of bring into our lives. Right. I want to point out one more important thing because I yeah. know it resonates with some people. The word guilt. Just because you're being happy and having wonderful times does not mean that you love that person less, does not mean that you miss that person less, does not mean anything at all. All it means is that you're doing what that person would probably want you to do. And I don't care whether it's a sibling, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a parent, that person would want you to be happy. And that's a hard thing for people to realize because they're busy saying, oh, but that person's not with me anymore and I shouldn't be happy anymore. That's not the way we want you to think. You have to get used to the fact that this is now my new life. It's a new chapter. It's a new slice, whatever you want to call it. But it, you have to now move on in, in your own pace, in your own way. But guilt is not part of that. What's part of that is knowing that life is precious and you make the most out of whatever it is you have, whether it's just the short amount of time you have left, whether it's whatever years you have left, it doesn't matter, but you deserve to be happy in your life. And you'll get that happiness with time if you can't get it right now. So that's right. That's right. So, you know, what I have to say in response to that is you have nothing to lose. That's you have right. nothing to lose by writing some goals down for the year, okay? Maybe breaking it down month by month, like we said, maybe you wanna complete three things in the month. Maybe it's just two things. It's not sure. four things that make you happy. Whatever it may be, it can't hurt you to, to try to start. It's a stepping stone and it's a baby step to put it on paper and then to check those things off because you will accomplish them. And should the end of the year come and you look back and you say, well, I was at 50%, I mm -hmm. got half of them done. It's 50% further yes. than you would have yes. if you didn't put any a pen to paper, Yes. right? So try, challenge Absolutely. yourself a little bit, no matter what situation you're in, just yes. try. Yes, right? so let's talk about the support that we individually give as well. Susan, you have a lot of support things for people. Why don't you? explain those a little bit. As both an end of life doula and a, a legacy specialist, uh, I do work online. I do a lot of work like this in a Zoom room. And I have legacy projects that take four weeks. We get together two hours a week. And after four weeks, uh, I put a book together filled with photos and text. It's a big, it's a large book. As a matter of fact, you could see it on my website. And the website is up there, eastendulacare.com. And you can read more about that on there. And we have a, I have a couple books on there, as Lisa does as well, and they can be found on Amazon. And we have eastend.academy, which houses some uh, courses, uh, most of them end-of-life courses that will really help you uh, get through a, this particular time in life. And, and Lisa, we do, your, we do have, your books? Well, we do have a joint course that we did, um, mm -hmm. and I want to point that out, and also one that's coming up. Uh, we had What Does a Dying Person Want? And that's on the site that Susan just mentioned. And we also have something that's coming up on February 8th, which will be about end of life um, uh, journey. And, um, you know, and it describes what people are going through and the process and all. And then the loss different as well. phases and different stages, phases. right? There's yes. three different yes. phases during end of life. So we, we go into a little more detail about that. Right. And so loss we'll as be well. Putting the, yeah, and yeah. loss as well. So you'll, people exactly. will be looking out for that. 
and we'll make sure we yeah. link. Um, for me, I have two support books that benefit pancreatic cancer research through the Lustgarten Foundation. Um, and they can be also uh, found on, um, you know, um, Amazon and also on my own website, which I don't have up there, but it's www.familiesmoveon.com. And that's a support book for people who have lost loved ones uh, to the disease. But the first book uh, is uh, for people going through that disease, uh, caregivers and all families. Um, and then both of us do individual work. You want to talk about your individual work, Susan? Yeah. So um, in New York on Long Island, you know, I do the legacy work and the, and the doula work, but also wherever you are, you know, nationally, internationally, Zoom's been a saving grace for a lot of businesses these days. And I do a lot of consulting and, um, you know, work online. So that makes it easier for families yes. and group group family work too, you know, and everybody can jump on a Zoom call, which makes that really convenient as well. Sure. You know? And for me as a bereavement specialist, I've done uh, support groups, widow widower support groups. I can do other groups. I'd love to work with funeral homes um, and also individual work because everybody's at a different stage. So helping people through the different processes as days go by is something that I also am able to do. Um, I understand it. We both understand death all too well, death and dying. So um, you're speaking to two people who get it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. So, well, yeah. great, Lisa. Thank you so much. Yeah. And happy new year again. Happy new year to you too. And, uh, okay. and we hope that people will subscribe and also, uh, you know, promote because there are people going through all kinds of really challenging times. And we want to reach out to as many people as possible through these. these We're YouTube only trying videos. to give some helpful and valuable information to everybody who needs it at the time that they need it. Right, Lisa? We are. All right. Take well, care. Thank you for, for watching today. And thank we'll you. see you next week. Sounds good. Okay. Bye. Bye.